Yes. And my mentor was a man named Di Vernon. I mean, Di Vernon, Di Vernon is the guy that he, he tricked Houdini in front yes. of his wife, right? And Houdini's uh -huh. wife that. initialed on the card or, you know, and he... Right. By the way, this is what he said about you. Having seen countless number of card experts execute for over 80 years, I consider Richard Turner to be by far the most skillful. He performs the most difficult moves with the greatest ease. I doubt if anyone can equal him. He does things with cars that no one in the world can do. No one. Now, this is Di Vernon saying this about you. you know, I know. It's pretty darn cool, <laughs> I have to say. And, and, and for those in the business, know who he is. For a century, the whole 20th century, he was the most influential person in the whole area of magic, sleight of hand, close-up magic, gambling work. And he kept making it come back to the top. Okay, take all these cards, turn them one direction. Turn them one put, direction yeah, because put, put, two of them are, two of them yes, are, uh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and put the rest of the cards back with them. Put the, in other words, put the deck back together. Okay. You want me to turn the cards or no? Leave them the yeah, way they are? Yeah, turn them all faced up. Make okay. sure all in one direction, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Di Vernon had very nice things to say about you. Yeah, and he was born in 1894. Yep. He lived to be almost 100 years old. My wife, years Kim, old, and I uh, threw him his 98th birthday in 1992. You want the cards up? You want uh, the face up or no? Why not? Face up. Okay. Name a card. King of hearts. Take out the kings. Okay. Take out the four kings. Okay. And while you take out well, the kings. Take all the kings? I'll take out all four kings, okay. yes. Uh, King. Um, but yeah, he, uh, anyway, uh, Vernon took a liking to me back in 75, and I became the recipient of a century worth of his most guarded card table artifice. You got your kings? I did, yes. Okay. And what he would do, and which was kind of unique and w brought to my attention later, had him to me face up. What's your favorite suit? Uh, spades. Pull, take the spade. Okay. Okay. I'm just for now. I'm just gonna leave him sit there for a minute. Okay. Um, so he would, uh, when he would describe moves to me, because I couldn't see what he was showing me, mm -hmm. he tricked me. He didn't describe them to me in the way that he could do them, or the way that anyone else has ever been able to do them. But he believed in naturalness, in doing things in a way that you don't think something is happening. And so he described them in a perfect manner. And he would say, Richard, this is how it's done. And he'd put the deck in my hand, and in, in his hands, and, he'd, and I'd get as cl really close and try to get an idea, and mm -hmm. then I'd touch his hands. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me, this is how it should be done. And, only, and I spent thousands of hours, tens of thousands of hours, working on many different moves, techniques, controls. And it wasn't until years later that he admitted to me that he made them up. He did not think they were possible to do that way. He did it just to see what this obsessed kid would come up with because he would see that I would put in 10, the 15, hours. 20 hours a day. And then every time he'd see me, he would, uh, he would go, that's it. And what you just saw there, when I first, the one I read, just still that stud, mm -hmm. stud him, I was, we were at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. And I said, Professor, what do you think about combining this with this and this? Because uh, I thought this is the ultimate. This is the most deceptive, ultimate way to control a game. And he goes, it's not possible. He said, your brain can't work that fast. Your hands can't be that sensitive. You break rhythm. It won't work. It can't be done. He said that to you. That's what he said to me. And I'm standing, I'm standing, he's sitting at the, at the bar at the Magic House. I'm standing there going, and I was depressed. I sat there and I was, I was going, oh, bummer. He says, it can't be done, but it's the ultimate. Mm. It's perfect. And so for about 10 minutes, I was depressed. Then all of a sudden I thought, hold it, but I can do it. I said, Professor, come watch my show. And so he came to the, we watched my show at the castle there, and he came up and goes, Richard, what the hell are you doing in there? I don't understand what the hell you were doing. I said, remember when you said you can't do this? this? That's what I'm, I don't understand how the hell you can do that. I, and anyway, for the next 18 months, everybody that came, came over, Max, come here, watch this, Max, watch this, shuffle the cards, how many players were you? And he would go on and on and over and over. And then two years that later, he goes, I, I still don't understand how the hell you can do that. So and he, he knows he, exactly what I'm doing. He can't do what you're doing. No, no. Seriously, he can't. Di, Di Vernon couldn't do what you did. Almost everything I do in my show, the techniques and the methods that I'm using, it's very exclusive. There, you won't see it done again. I'll put wow. it that way. I'll show you some moves. See, okay. there's your king of spades. Yes? yes. Now, I want the king of spades. This is one of the, one of the things that Professor uh, showed to me. We deal, we deal cards around the table. But watch face up. See how the card stays as the second card mm. is dealt. But see, uh, this particular second deal is actually named after me. It's called Turner Sweep Second. But what I have to do is my left thumb must apply the precise amount of pressure to push over exactly 22.6 thousandths of an inch. 
and that is the and, and that's the caliper of two cards see exactly two cards and so and then my right thumb it only has a 60 a 64th of a second as it's sweeping across the deck here to engage that second card and then deal it out you know, it's only that blink of a moment uh, now I'll, I'll do it see you know because you figure is what that top or bottom what you're that's doing right the now. second card it's the second card your your other kings are still on the bottom see and here I'll do it oh my gosh I'll do it real slow really be to slow it down get some more cards back here so I'll use them all up. <laughs> All right. So, uh, were you a math guy? Were you a math guy growing up? Or? Not really. And none, nothing I do is based on math. It's all based on finger control, mm. fingertip control, and touch. See that card, King? Let's see if I can do this. Really, really. This is this is one of the first second deals that I that I came up with. But you do it really, really, really slowly. You turn it face up so you can f see a little more clearly. See. But you have to deal the card. Second card is neatly. That's, see, that's Vernon would talk about re, re, you know, relaxed grip, natural grip. And see, here's here's one-handed. Now, when the card's face down, see when it's face down, see it's hard to tell that you're being taken. But that's that's dealing seconds. Anyway, so he kept showing me move after move after move, and and he would describe them to me in a way. And so I developed them only to find out that. He couldn't do them that way, and other people couldn't do them that way, and a lot of the times he just thought they were, it was flat out not possible to do it that way. Say a number 10 to 20. 10 to 20? Yeah, pick a number. Okay, 17. Okay, I'm going to try to cut with one hand 17 cards. Come on. Count them. Come on. Well, we count them, we'll find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Three, Come yes. on. Pat him back. Pat Come him back. Face on. Down. Okay. Come on. <laughs> I mean, how could you do that? Uh, okay. We, one we, hand that I just said in one second, you gave it to me. Let me try this. Four and ten. Two different numbers at the same time. One, two, three. I got that one. See if that's ten cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Put them back on the deck face down. <laughs> okay. Now take the deck and cut it. Cut half the deck and put the other half on top. Cut it and finish it. Okay, now, because people are always asking, why would you waste your time developing a touch like that? I'll show you one of the purposes. Give me a number of players in a card room. Three, four, five, pick a number. Four. You're my partner. You want to set it one, two, three, or four? Uh, two. F four and two, okay. And once again, as we mentioned earlier, the way you're allowed to shuffle in the casinos, the deck has to stay face down on the table. Okay. Riffle, shuffle. And it's because you know, it's the hardest way to control if you're going to control. Four players, second position. Mm -hmm. Take the deck so you don't think I'm doing anything dirty. Deal a card off the top, face up, player one right here. Okay. And I think you chose kings and you're player number two. Face up a card right here. What's that card? That's king of clubs. First player one was three. nine of hearts. Player three right here. Okay. And player four. Okay. Start here again, player one. Okay. And number two is you. Okay. What's that card? <laughs> um, uh. Player three. Okay. Player four. Okay. Just keep circling the table. Player one, tell us what number two is. Oh, my king again. That's Start Betty, big time oh there. Patrick makes gosh. money off the producer. Oh, my gosh. And did I get the last one? Ten. Ten ah, deal, the next, deal the next card out of curiosity. King of spades. I missed. So let me, do you exp let me explain what happened. Sure. There. I shuffled your cards back in the deck exactly where you chose every fourth position, starting at number two. But I missed one of those shuffles by the thickness of 11.3 thousandths of an inch. And that's why that one card was off by one. That one card was off by one card. Are you kidding? So me? I explained how and what happened there.